So you're looking to fast track your cybersecurity career and somebody told you to get the CISP Associate Certification because you don't need the required experience. In this video, we're gonna walk through the normal requirements for the CISP certification, what the CISP Associate or the Associate of ISC Squared is and why it may or may not make sense for your specific situation. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you like my training and you want more, check out my website at johngood.com to get access to training courses about distracting interruptions or advertisements. Make sure that you check out my getting started link in the description to sign up for my newsletter and get a free copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. You can also join me on the Discord server. The link is down in the description. All right, let's get into the video. One of the most well-known certifications when it comes to cybersecurity is the CISP or the Certified Information Systems Security Professional. If you've ever seen one of those surveys they do every year that lists the salaries with the certifications, you've absolutely seen the CISP pulling in six-figure incomes and I'm actually not disputing that fact whatsoever. I get asked about the Associate of ISC Squared all the time, and people sometimes call it the CISP Associate, but unfortunately, there's a misunderstanding on the actual subject. First, let's talk about the CISP requirements that you need to have in order to be fully endorsed and certified. The CISP certification covers a wide variety of topics across eight domains on anything from computer and network security to physical security, so things like the height of your fences. In order to get certified, you have to have experience in at least two of the domains over five years of work experience. Now there's additional ways that you can get a one-year waiver, bringing down the experience requirement to only four years. Employers like the Department of Defense have specific mandates like the DOD 8140, or formerly the DOD 8570, that actually require a CISP for a certain level of job responsibility. Private companies also really like the CISP certification too for their high paying jobs. Now based on this, it definitely is useful to get the CISP in your career. So where does the associate designation come into play? The truth is that anybody can take the CISP certification exam at any point in their career, and you don't have to have the experience to actually test. If you pass the exam, you're provided instructions to get fully certified, or you become an associate level until you have the experience required. This means that technically, you could get your first security job and test that very minute and become an associate. I hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far. If you are, make sure to hit the thumbs up to like this video. And if you think of any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Also remember that this training and courses can be found on my website at johngood.com without distracting interruptions or advertisements. All right, let's get back to the content. Let's break down why getting the CISP associate is generally not a good idea for most people. When you pass the CISP exam without the required experience, you become an associate of IC squared and you aren't actually allowed to mention the CISP in your designation on your resume because you aren't one. Much of the benefit of the certification comes from the backing of your experience in cybersecurity. If you can't even list the CISP, what good is it, honestly? I'm actually speaking from experience here because I did go the associate route and I probably spent more time explaining what that even means than it was worth. Honestly, nobody even knew what the associate of IC squared meant. Employers don't care if you just pass the exam because you aren't certified. They care about the certification. Instead of trying to pass the CISP exam extremely early, you could be racking up cloud certifications or something more useful to employers that are still gonna get you those high pay bumps. Now you might be asking, is there a time when it makes sense to actually take the exam early before you have the experience? Yes, there's definitely a time when it actually makes sense. I generally don't even mention the CISP to people unless they have at least three years of experience because that way, when you add up all the studying after that three years, you're gonna be pretty close to your actual requirement once you pass the exam. At that point, I would hold off on switching jobs until you get certified because what's six months of waiting when you can get a lot more pay and better positions once you actually get certified? Question of the day, are you studying for the CISP? How many years of experience do you have? Let me know down in the comment section. In this video, we went over the requirements for the CISP, described what the associate of IC squared is and when you should and shouldn't attempt the CISP exam. Remember, you're trying to get the certifications that provide you the highest return possible for your current stage of your career. Don't be blinded by all the certification choices out there and be honest with yourself. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without distracting interruptions or advertisements, and I'll see you next time.